Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Here's the question for today. Hey Richard, how can I make more power for my daily driver small block Ford? You're in luck. I've tested a bunch of those. Aww. In this video, we're gonna take a look at some upgrades I made to a five liter 302 small block Ford. Now we're gonna talk about a bunch of different options, maybe from the wrecking yard. Although I started out with a rebuilt 302, I wanna show you what happened when we upgraded the cylinder heads, camshaft and intake manifold on that small block Ford. Also, it helps show you what you might expect from your build. To illustrate what it takes to build a low dollar, uh, affordable small block Ford combination, this particular one was a carbureted version, but you could also use it with factory fuel injection or any of the aftermarket fuel injections available for the five liter Ford Mustang. But this is a good little carbureted small block and it can be duplicated a number of different ways. And we're gonna go over all that. The ours came from, our test motor, or the portion of it, came as a long block from the guys at Marshall Engines. It's the same kind of basic rebuild small block that you get from any local auto parts store from hundreds of retailers that are out there online. Your basic bottom end kind of just, <laughs> as I said, a basic rebuilt 302 5 liter motor. So this thing included cast pistons, it had factory rods, it had a factory crankshaft, it had a late model factory hydraulic roller block, it had E7TE Mustang heads on it, stock valve sizes, and it had springs on it that we eventually had to upgrade because we were putting camshafts in it, and the springs are stockish uh, rates, and so you want, might want to think about upgrading those if your plan is to put a camshaft in them. We also ran, uh, we, we because this came as a long block, we had to configure it to run on the dyno with something, you know, all of the accessory parts of it, basically. So I want to thank Mark Sanchez for coming to the rescue with the 5-liter Ford stuff that we needed. We put a 5-liter Ford oil pan, the dual sump deal, and the pickup on this, on this short or on this long block. We installed, this thing also had a double roller timing chain and we covered that with a factory five liter Ford timing cover. And then we installed a 50 ounce damper on it. This was set up to run as a late model hydraulic roller Mustang engine. So it had a 50 ounce balance so we installed a 50 ounce damper on it. We then put on a Mazir electric water pump to run it on the engine dyno. So for induction system, after putting our stamp steel uh, rocker covers to cover the factory stamp steel rockers and factory push rods, we installed a dual plane intake manifold. Now this particular one was a low dollar one. It was polished, so it looked pretty good. Came from the guys over at Speedmaster and it works really well. We've run it many, many times. We top that with, you can top it with either a Holley 650 like we did or a brawler in this power range, both of those are going to make basically the same power. We installed long tube headers again, so that just so we could run it on the dyno with collector extensions. And then we installed an MSD distributor. Now I want to go over the fact that this is not the most low buck way to go because obviously buying a rebuilt motor is, is, is not terribly cost effective because it's definitely going to cost you more than simply going to the wrecking yard and getting a motor. So let's talk about that for a minute. If you are going to do this in like an ultra low buck deal, just go get the motor from the wrecking yard. And the reason that I wanted to bring that up is you can go get a 302 from a, a five liter Ford Explorer and you already have really good heads on it. You have the GT40 heads on it. It'll have a good EFI induction system on it. You could replace that if you want and just buy the thing as a long block, but the carburetor induction system like we had with an inexpensive brawler and a dual plane intake from Speedmaster or other sources and then put a put get a, a distributor from the wrecking yard and also run that. So that's the ultra low buck way to do it and and, and that also produces equivalent results. We've run this rebuilt motor and I've run lots of the five liter motors either from trucks or from Mustangs, T-Birds from the wrecking yard and they all produce this power. So we didn't get any big gains from having a rebuilt version rather than just something that came from the wrecking yard. So run in this manner with the headers and dual plane and 650 Holly on it and distributor. We obviously adjusted the jets and the timing to optimize the power but this thing was stock, so it made stock power, which means it made 257.5 peak horsepower at 4,700 RPM, you know, all the way up there. Torque was pretty decent because it's a 5 liter V8, 328 foot pounds, but over 300 all the way out to 4,500 RPM. So it would feel good driving around, but it's a stock cam, stockish kind of motor. Now let's see what happens when we upgrade this thing and find out how much more power we can make on a mild daily driver kind of build. 
We've taken a look at what happens when we put together a combination. In our case, it was the Marshall Engine rebuilt long block. But again, you could get the same thing from any 302 from the wrecking yard, whether it comes from a truck or a a five liter Mustang or T-Bird or that kind of thing. Um, and especially the go-to thing anymore is the, as I mentioned, is the five liter Explorer motor because it already has a good in intake manifold if you want to go fuel injected. That Cobra style tubular intake manifold, um, it's, it's a cast version of that, but it works very well. It also has good heads. It's got the GT40 heads, which are way better than the factory E7TE heads. So if you're starting with that, and you're going to do what we did here, you would do that motor, you'd put springs in it, you put a cam in it, and put the intake, if you wanted to run the dual plane, you could do that, if you run an EFI, you could keep the EFI intake manifold, and you'd be well on your way to making pretty good power. You're not going to make the kind of power that we made here, because that, that GT40 head isn't nearly as good as the blueprint head that we ended up running on this one, but it's going to be a lot cheaper because it already has all of the, or almost all of the things that you need. So for a really mild, good daily driver application, a GT40 headed Explorer 5 liter motor with a camshaft in it and springs in it is really a good way to go and a lot cheaper. But on ours, we ran our Marshall uh, rebuilt motor and we ran it with a Speedmaster intake manifold and Holly carburetor and headers and it made 257 horsepower and 328 foot pounds. But here's what happened after we upgraded it. So you can see we got huge power gains and what we did is we put a really big set, a really good set of cylinder heads on it. These are actually CNC ported 205 heads from the guys at Blueprint Engines. Now, before you cry foul, <laughs> we were using these heads for a bunch of other things later on. I just wanted to put them on this motor. This was kind of a strange combination in that they were CNC ported, they are 205 cc's, they flowed very well, but they are also set up to accept the um, bolt down style rockers, which we had, and they worked they worked very well. But it seems like a strange combination. Most heads like that would be set up to accept um, rocker like seven sixteenths rocker studs, and that's normally the way that they come. But what we did do is we also installed a Comp Extreme Energy two seventy four cam, which is the 555, 565 lift, 224, 232, and 112 degree lobe separation angle, and it works really well. I ran it in my Mustang forever, and it's a, it's a really good camshaft. It's getting near the limit of, I think, what I would use uh, for a daily driver kind of 302. If you've got a 331 or 347, it becomes even tamer, but you can see it made really good power. The one thing I want to say about the cylinder heads is you could go the GT40 route from the 5 liter Explorer, but the nice thing about having a lot of cylinder head is it allows you to make any given power level with much less cam timing. So you can kind of juggle those two things. And as you go down in cam timing and up in cylinder head, you can still make the same power, but the drivability is going to be much better because the camshaft is going to be tamer. So the idle quality and the low speed drivability is going to be much better with a smaller cam and a bigger head combination than the reverse of that, that it also takes to make that kind of power. So with this new combination, we ran the same intake manifold and same headers and carburetor, and the peak power was up to Whoa. 384 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 369 foot-pounds, and I didn't run it below 3,500. We should have, because this thing would still be responsive with that camshaft and everything it, way down there. As I said, I know I drove this thing for a long time uh, on my car and drove it every day, and it was fuel-injected, and it had no problem with that kind of combination. But this goes to show you, if you take a 5-liter, put a decent camshaft in it, put some kind of cylinder head in it, something better than stock, or even the ported stock heads will also make this kind of power if you have them uh, ported properly. Uh, so the right camshaft, the right cylinder head, a good induction system, and you can make this kind of power. But if you want a little bit more, what we did here is I'll show you, um, just to, just in case you're you know out on the street and you want to get a little crazy, here's what happened. We just added a quick 100 horsepower with the nitrous and not surprisingly, it added 100 horsepower as they do. So we were looking near uh, 476 horsepower, 477. We could have, um, I didn't spend any time tuning this as this was on a, a, a plate nitro system. And we could have um, made this a little smoother out at the end. It started to get a little bit rich. We ran a 46 nitrous jet and I think a 40 fuel jet. And I think we were five and five and three quarter pounds of fuel supply 
to the nitrous plate. So this worked out really well and it just goes to show you even with the cast pistons and stuff you can get away with lots of stuff. I ran nitrous on my motor for a long time and never heard it and this stuff works good. We took away three degrees of timing on this and we're running everything. All of this was run on 91 octane but it just goes to show you. Rebuild the motor, put decent heads and cam and intake manifold on and if you really want to get crazy add some nitrous. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from our buildup on the 5-liter Ford, the little 302 small block Ford? As we saw, you can definitely make power with them, which is why they were so popular back in the day, and they continue to be popular even now. The one thing I need to point out is that unlike the LS engine family, when you want to have really good power gains, you can't just put a camshaft in the 5 liter Ford. Unfortunately, even that really nice extreme energy 274 cam that I always go by is only going to gain you maybe about 30 to 35 horsepower with the stock cylinder head if you upgrade the springs. But if you have better heads, you will gain even more as we showed with the aluminum blueprint heads. Now the low buck option, definitely go to the wrecking yard, get the 5 liter Explorer motor with the already good GT40 heads, put springs in them, put a camshaft in those, and you can get some of the way up to what we saw here. But as I pointed out, better cylinder heads and less camshaft is always a better way to go than the other way around. As we see with the right cylinder heads, camshaft, intake manifold, the 5 liter forward continues to make good power. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.